Chewie's really excited about the meme of the week. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Bill Tendo here, and I'm back with another brand new edition of the Nerd News. That being said, I do listen to feedback, and feedback has been, Bill, maybe the button-up shirt and tie is a little extra. So, this week, no button-up shirt. With that being said, if you'd like to support the channel, please check out our Patreon down below, and that would be swell. But if not, just enjoy the content. It's all yours. First off, we really want to get into Wednesday's Nintendo Direct. So, obviously, obviously the biggest story was in the last two minutes of the Nintendo Direct. We received a new trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know anyone that's not excited for this right now. Everyone seems super amped about it. I am a huge Zelda fan, so of course I am. We saw a lot of new stuff that we haven't seen previously. We saw Link riding a vehicle of some kind. Not the motorcycle he had at the end of Breath of the Wild's Hero Quest. Um, we've seen him using several other things. We've seen new weapons. We've seen new enemies. It all looks great. We've also seen new locations. But what I did not see a lot of was Dungeons. And that was probably most people I know's largest complaints about Breath of the Wild originally to begin with, that we didn't have Zelda Dungeons, which are such an integral part of the series to everyone. But we did see some underground areas, and they look interesting. We saw a Luminous Stone, uh, Stone Talus, which looked amazing. That's great. Uh, I'm, I'm a stone farmer in the game. I farm so many stones. Uh, it's easy to max out your bank account that way. But that being said, Tis of the Kingdom looks phenomenal. Now we do have a release date and it's only about three months away. Pre-orders are open and there is also a collector's edition and a beautiful amiibo, which you can see pictures of here. The hand is interesting. That the hand is interesting because that's something new. Okay. Well, with that being said, definitely put in your pre-orders. I don't really pre-order games, but it's Zelda. I mean, come on, man. And moving on from Zelda, we also saw quite a few other things. Um, I would like to specifically point out a uh, remaster. A Batten Kaitos 1 and 2 HD remaster. Now, these are GameCube games, and they are kind of a card-style RPG. These are pretty fun games, but we always thought they'd be stuck on the GameCube. Excuse me. <coughs> that being said, it's nice to see some of these console-specific games being remastered for now. Because we're getting tired of the same old remasters. That being said, we also have another GameCube remaster announced on the Nintendo Direct, which was Metroid Prime. I'm into it. I'm into it. Metroid Prime was the first Metroid in the series to go into that format, and everyone loves it. And now if you can play that in HD with cleaned up graphics and better music, wow, I'm excited. Let's hope that Nintendo is fully committed to doing a full update and remaster of this game like they did on Link's Awakening as opposed to a little bit of spit polish like they did on GoldenEye. GoldenEye looks better, but it doesn't play better. Metroid Prime could use a couple of quality of life improvements, and I'm interested to see those happen. Now... We're going to move on to our next subject of the day. And that is going to be Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I did an article on this in the last couple of weeks where I spoke about we were going to have to wait and see 
how people actually reacted to Hogwarts Legacy being released. Is it going to sell copies? There is a lot of outrage with the original author of the source material, but on the other hand, this is a fantastic looking game. Last week alone, after release, Steam reported half a million sales alone. I don't have the exact numbers here for Xbox or um, PlayStation, but a half a million in the first week on just Steam seems fantastic. But with that being said, obviously people were not voting with their wallets. There has been more controversy, and it's something that I hate to see. Um, there are people that are streaming Hogwarts Legacy on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever, and they're being raided by basically trolls trying to shame them and shut them down. I hate things like this, and I'm going to explain why, and it's very brief. It doesn't matter which side you are on. Bullying, harassment, and all-around general negativity is bad for the gaming community. You are not improving anything by acting like a dick because you don't like something. If you don't like it, don't buy it. It's that simple. I don't care if you buy the game or not. I'm not going to make your personal life choices for you on what you morally support or ethically support and don't. However, I am a firm believer in community and this is a community. Gamers are a community. You cannot treat other people this way. You treat people the way you would like to be treated. You would not be okay if someone came onto your stream, especially a large group of people, and trolled you and shamed you and bashed you until you refused to stream anymore. You would not be okay with that. So why are you okay doing it to someone else? Our community needs a lot more positivity. There are too many gatekeepers. There are too many self-appointed moral regulators. And I know, I get the irony, that's a little bit what I sound like right now, but it's something I am very passionate about. We just let people enjoy shit! Now we're going to move on to our next category. Let people enjoy shit! Now, we're going to talk about tech news. And I think I'd like to get into hardware acts aspects and software aspects of technology because I enjoy learning about these things. But that's not what I want to talk about this week. What I want to talk about this week in our tech news is actually about the seemingly excessive amounts of layoffs that tech companies are doing. Now, first of all, I would love to put Twitter in this category because they have done tons of layoffs and are a tech company. However, the layoffs seem to be purely Elon motivated, wanting to do whatever it is that he is doing, and it does not seem related to the tech industry by his actions. That being said, Google, PayPal, Microsoft have all laid off a total of well over 100,000 people in the last weeks. Um, tech companies received a huge increase in users and countered that with huge hiring sprees because of the pandemic. Everyone was home. Everyone needed to work from home. People played from home. Everything you did was online because you couldn't associate with people. So. Internet traffic was up a thousand percent. So these companies hire more and more employees. Well, that's all settled down now, especially with the economy. People are a little doubtful. People are not spending as much. And therefore, tech services 
are not as heavily needed right now, leading to massive layoffs. How far will this trend continue? How long will it go on? Are we going to see it continue to go down? Or are we going to see things kind of plateau? Where are these people going to go to work? They've been in the tech industry for the last two years. And now, without prior warning, we have over 100,000 people without jobs that need to find them. And the tech industry is not hiring. So, what are your thoughts on this? I'm interested. Let me know. We have a comment section. Use it. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to the Nerd News tonight. Sorry if I got a little out of hand. I get passionate about certain things and, you know, our gaming community is one of them. I enjoy it. It gives me so much. I do not like to see people try to tear it apart. We should all be one team. And with all that being said, please check out Pristine Grading Services. If you're looking for Pokemon cards, baseball cards, you're looking for comic books, you're looking for video games, and you want to get them graded by CGC, I've partnered with Pristine Grading Services, and we are a submittal company. We take the headache out of your hands. We do all of the paperwork. We do all of the submission. And we're cheaper. Because of our bulk volume discounts, we can offer you a better price than you would get going directly to CGC yourself. So, easier product, less money. It's a no-brainer. Link down below. Everybody, y'all have a great day. And don't forget to check out Forgotten Sci-Fi on Wednesday nights. Thank you.